Robert Zinni here from Five Senses. Our guest today is no other than Sky Daddy, Prescott's premier and hardest working musician on Whiskey Row. Robert Zinni here, ready to rock and roll with one of Prescott's hardest working musicians, Sky Daddy. Hey, Robert, how are you? It's good to see you. I'm doing great, Sky. Excellent. Thanks for coming on our show again. Oh, thanks for inviting me. Yeah, I really love your jacket. What what is what is your jacket all about? <laughs> well, I'm a rock star, so I got to dress the part. <laughs> yes, you are a rock star. I got a reputation to follow. <laughs> so the last time you were here, we were talking about your musical in, uh, influences and whatnot. Yes. Uh, what have you been up to since the last time you've been on our show? Gosh, lots, so many things. I, um, the, the, a big one is uh, the Soggy Bottom show is going to be happening at the Yavapai Performance Hall. Yes, that's the main reason. Yes. main reason yeah, why I'm you're here, really, everybody. Really excited about this show, Robert. Very, very excited about this one. Yeah. June 11th, Yavapai Performance Hall tickets are available at uh, so YC, YCPAC at yc.edu. Just, if you just Google Yavapai yeah. Performance Hall. Since you started with that, Sky, can you talk about how the show came about and like sure. if people don't know what the Soggy Bottom Band is, maybe tell them what it is? Of course, absolutely. We're talking about the movie, uh, Oh Brother, Where Art Thou? Uh, it's one of the best movies in the world. It's one of the Coen brothers. It's one of the movies that has a real, a, a very big underground following. Like the Big Lebowski, like Star Wars, like, you know, Holy Grail. It's just one of these movies that, ever, that there's, if you like it, you love it. <clears throat> and they had some really great music in the movie. It was several years ago, probably about 10 years ago, where I thought it would be neat to be the Soggy Bottom Boys, because one of the premises of the movie, one of the, one of the little subplots is that the, the Soggy Bottom Band, the Soggy Bottom Boys, make this record. And uh, it's very, very popular. The, 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 the music stores can't even hang on to it because people just keep buying it. But nobody knows who they are. They're, they're going to the DJ and say, who was that? The Soggy Bottom Boys, oh, I remember them. But then nobody, but nobody really knows exactly who they were because the DJ was blind, so he can't even describe them. <laughs> Right, so um, so the, so I thought it'd be neat if we did a show where like, we're the Soggy Bottom Boys, but for legal reasons we're calling us the Soggy Bottom Band, of course, because we're not officially legally the Soggy. We're, I'm not George Clooney. I'm not really George. <laughs> well, Clooney. with that beard, you kind of look like <laughs> George Clooney in a way. Yeah. Well, that's funny that you say that because my friend Jim Kelly on Halloween this year said so this, this idea has been in the back of my mind right for many years, but I never did. I talked about it, never did anything about it until Halloween this year when my friend Jim Kelly said exactly what you said with that beard you kind of look like george clooney and then of course i said well you know what i was thinking of doing this play the very next day i called robert i got tired of just talking about it and i just wanted to do it so i called my friend robert aragon of the aragon brothers because he'd be perfect uh in the sh in the show he'd be one of the main characters he sees he was on board i called jet montana yeah yeah because he's got the whole old timey look and vibe and just everything about him is old timey so he'd be perfect and he was into it so i said let's just do this and so my friend um Mike Austin, he was able to get Yavapai Performance Hall because I was thinking small scale. I was thinking, you know, Elks Theater, the Palace or something like that. But he's like, no, let's, we have a thousand six seats. I'm like, I don't know if we can make a thousand seats, but I think we're going to. I, in I think fact, I think we're going to sell out. Cool. Well, I'll buy a ticket to, to help you. But I think it's more importantly what our audience can maybe learn from this compliment somebody next time they have good style because you never know what will come about right a compliment <laughs> of george Clooney turned into, turned into a big soggy show. bottom band so that's awesome <laughs> yes. um so what is this are you going to recreate the movie or are you just playing the music so when i buy my ticket for right. june 11th right. what am i going to see sky Th thank you I'm, we're not we're not recreating the movie for sure okay um but what what it is is it's 80 percent music so it's, it's we play the music of the soggy bottom boys Right, so from the Oh Brother Where Art Thou, and I've I've picked the uh, the greatest old timey folk musicians that Prescott has to offer. Um, I'll, I can name them if you like. Please okay, do. Okay, okay, we got a uh, Cal uh, Greer on the upright bass guitar. We got Gordy Acree on the banjo. Nick Canuel, you've seen him. Yeah, you've seen him everywhere, right? In the mm -hmm. TBD show, even. So, and he plays with uh, Lou Larry in the Drive. He plays with Steph Griffin, but he plays a uh, mandolin in this show. Oh, nice. And he's the musical director. Uh, we have a violin player, fiddle player. We have a um, uh, washboard player. <laughs> and of course, there'll be me and, and Jet and Robert in the band as well. And we have special guests that are going to keep coming out. You know, just like in the movie, there's all these uh, characters that keep, we keep getting introduced to. And this, in the concert, there's going to be different guests of Prescott you know, players and musicians. 
that are going to come and sing a song and play with the band on a song. So 80% of it is the music of Oh Brother, Where Art Thou? 20% of it is some dialogue that I've written. I've written a, a kind of a play. And so um, if you've seen the movie, you will be tickled by the dialogue. <laughs> some of the dialogue comes straight from the movie in a whole different context, of course, because we're not recreating the movie. But um, so I just kind of took on, I, I studied their characters. I watched the movie about a dozen times and I kind of put their characters and, and the way they say things and what they say into the dialogue that happens in between the songs. And uh, just like the movie, weird things are going to keep happening in this concert. I won't tell you what, but just weird, odd things like what was that all about you know okay. and then at the end it all just kind of comes together just like every coen brothers movie wow that sounds like a really good um night of entertainment not only do i get 80 percent of the music but then i can't like kudos to you for writing i did not know yeah. that guy i mean we work at the tbd show together um kudos to you for writing it it's my first play i've ever written all right i've been dry i think i told you last time i was on the show i've been dry as far as songwriting um, and I'm still dry. I still haven't written a song since the last time we talked, but I've written a play. So maybe my creativity is taking a different turn. Maybe. And I think maybe we can get um, that one critic from the TBD show, with <laughs> Jim Adams, to come critique your show. What do you think? I think that would be wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. So uh, the one thing I, I do want to say is, though, even though you're you're going to play music from there, I really appreciate that you're going to bring uh, the local talent here from Prescott to uh, kind of do what the band did with the last waltz, have them come up yes. and have a good thing. So that that would be really cool. Exactly. You know what I'm talking about. Yeah, it's fun uh -huh. talking to you because you're so knowledgeable about music. And things, but that's exactly what I wanted to do. Okay. Yeah, but on a, on a smaller scale in local right. Prescott. And, and Mike Austin is the executive producer. Like I say, he was one who turned it into something big. All of a sudden, you know, I was talking about my ideas and all of a sudden it was our ideas, you know. All of a sudden he's like, well, when we do this, you know. So he was just all of a sudden included in this. And um, he he created a, a, a business, the Soggy Bottom Band Productions. Okay. So the sole purpose is to promote local Prescott musicians. So you're going to take this uh, uh, band on the run, maybe? We might. I'm thinking about doing it. Band on the run. Exactly. Yes, um, absolutely. If this if this goes well, I, I, I we're pretty sure we're going to do another show if it, if it sells out and it does well. And I've already got some other shows in the back of my brain right now. It's we might do after after this one. Yeah. So maybe when you're in the run, maybe that's just going into a different uh, realm of things. Exactly. You know, I mean, writing a play is kind of like writing a song. So that's pretty cool. It is. It's very cool. Thank yeah. you. No problem. Um, so uh, we'll be providing more information at the end of the episode after Sky plays a song for us. Okay. Um, so 2022 Valentine's Day, I heard Sky Daddy might be doing some pretty cool things. Yes. Well, what do you got going on for Valentine's Day? Valentine's Day 2022, it's here, isn't it? I guess so. So, <laughs> so um, I'll be doing some singing Elvis crams. Whoa, really? Yes, I, that's what I do it every year. Okay. I actually uh, go to people's, in, like I uh, go to their business or their, their, their girlfriend's business the place where they work and embarrass them. And I'm dressed full head to toe as early Elvis. And I pretend like I am Elvis and I sing a couple of love songs to them and okay. give them some roses or, or whatever, whatever the, whatever the agreement was between me and the, and the, the person that's giving this is. So it's, it's something that they will never forget. I can see that. Are you gonna have the beard for Elvis? No, 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 this will be gone by then. <laughs> Good. No, this this show is um, taped, right? So so you wouldn't yeah. see me on Valentine's Day. I won't have the beard. I do gotta say I do love the beard. As a man that loves facial hair, you really do. I know we asked a lot from the TV show of having that beard, but I really appreciate that look. Um, so with the with the nice. Elvis Graham, how does one get more information about the Elvis Graham? How can I pay you to go to my work and uh, sing to some people? Give me a call. Uh, nine two eight seven one zero four five five three is my phone number. I don't mind saying that out loud because that's my that's my business number as well. So you can call me, and we'll set up a, a, a time, and we can talk about the details. There's a min, one of many different songs that I can sing. Uh, if you want me to bring her flowers, I could do that. I'm, I'm, if you have a special request, I can do that. And one time they wanted it was kind of a, a joke as a woman hired me to sing to a dude to her boyfriend, which was kind of awkward, you know. And she wanted me to bring him a gift of uh, granny panties. <laughs> whatever, whatever you want. You know, whatever, whatever floats, floats your boat. boat. Yes, exactly. Whatever. Wow. But he was so embarrassed. The whole point was to embarrass him, and he was very embarrassed. Sweet. And <laughs> right so, in front of his coworkers. That, that's kind of funny. <laughs> You're giving me some ideas since, uh, you know, I may, uh, you know, may want to bring Elvis Sky Daddy to North Point at some point, maybe on Valentine's Day. Um, for our audience, how much would it be? Or would you discuss that? We would have to discuss it on the phone. It all it depends. Okay. Less, less than a hundred bucks. Okay. I De think depending on what, you know, a dozen roses, you know, it would be uh, maybe one rose, of course, would be cheaper. 
One okay. song will be the cheapest, but if you want me just to stick around and do a few more songs, I can do that too. Hey man, we, we can talk. I think that'd be worth the audience for uh, Sky Daddy to come sing some. He ain't nothing but a hound dog, maybe or something. You like that. ain't nothing but a hound dog. Exactly. So I actually might hire you to okay. sing some uh, things for North Point. So that'll be fun. We'll Thank keep you. that in the back of my mind. So yeah, Valentine's Day, twenty twenty two. Um, please call Sky Daddy, and he can serenade whoever you want to. And if you have some, you know nice fetish or what you like uh, maybe he'll bring some of that too you never know <laughs> whatever if it's legal i'll do it <laughs> you got that on camera everybody? Okay. um so we've been laughing a, a bunch and so um we are about in march um to have the second season of the tbd show finish so our finale of the one or the two part epic sci-fi thing is um is happening so hopefully the viewers saw us and the last time we saw Sky, Sky Daddy um, it was after the seance and you are playing Johnny Cash in the dungeon area with the producer Joe so like what happened to Sky Daddy if you can tell us <laughs> I can't tell you you have to watch the TVD show but Robert I want to thank you and, and the whole crew and cast for inviting me along because it's been so much fun and I, and I hope I'm, I'm on board for all the rest of the seasons but I, I can't tell you what, what's going to happen but yeah you saw me in the dungeon Mm -hmm. we'll see what happens next yeah and uh no sky daddy we really like uh having you a part of the production because you bring some sort of element like we were filming in the secret location that i can't tell you um but you're kind of playing battle music mm -hmm. and i gotta say that you did a good job of the upbeat kind of barracuda with a little bit of johnny cash and i really think it's going to flow so i really thank like you. the element of what you bring to us thank you um mm -hmm. it's just I've, i'm not I'm this I'm not used to doing it. I was an extra in a Hollywood movie once, but and but I, it's not really what something that I do a lot. So it's really interesting to get be behind the scenes because because I played I played battle music for a good six and a half minutes. It, it, I kept waiting for them to say, okay, that's enough. But and of course they're not going to use all of that. They're gonna they're gonna splice it and stuff. So it's really interesting for me to be behind the scenes and and see how this thing is put together. Oh, it's it's great. Like I, I re like before the fourth episode was released, I got to review it, and I'm like, all right, now this hard work is coming to the best but i want to know like for our viewers at home because like, i work with you we act together mm -hmm. uh what's some of your favorite aspects of the tbd show oh yeah it's just a, it's so unique it's hilarious never seen anything like it you know what's genius about the show what i don't know if, if you if you can't use it just you know splice it but um i think it's genius that it's all about the show and you're always talking about the show and you're the host of the show we don't really see the show <laughs> <laughs> Except, and then we realized when the show's over, like that was the show that they were they, they were talking about it, but it was happening at the same time. It's, it's not like you know the Muppet Show. There was actually like an audience, and there was like acts and stuff. And we saw what happened behind the scenes, but everything is behind the scenes on the DVD show. Appreciate. I think it's genius. Well, thank you. That's a, that's a huge compliment. <laughs> we're trying to uh, confuse our audience <laughs> right. into a fever dream. So therefore, at the end of everything, they really don't know <laughs> what they saw. But I think our our audience is. Uh, have grown mm -hmm. and I think they appreciate um, each little character because I think what people may not know about is that like like um, parts like your part or Duncan's part we had you for a small scene like Duncan came on and we just had him be an extra of spilling water on him for the Halloween episode and then the next episode we made him a villain now he's like a main cast yes uh, we were talking to you because you were our first musical guest of the TVD show mm -hmm. and uh, we were saying wouldn't it be cool if Sky Daddy auditioned <laughs> and then we got you for audition but then we made you a lead character, character in yeah. season two yeah. so um if you haven't seen it you should definitely watch it not for me but for sky daddy's um crescendo of a storyline because uh, it's awesome. really going to be also, uh, also for zinni the, the, the amazing host of the tbd show I, so, you know, I try to host a bunch of things five senses tbd show whatever else you want me to host is totally <laughs> fine um so that's TBD show. Um, we're gonna have you perform in a moment. I love that. You know, you know what else I love about the TBD show? What? It all kind of, um, the every episode builds on the last episode. So you, I mean, you can join the TBD show at any point and be entertained. <laughs> but it, it's it's more it you, you it's it's a whole nother um, dynamic if you've seen what happens before you follow the stories as as they go. Along. Exactly, it's the long con for the audience. Like if you saw episode one, and kudos mm -hmm. to anybody who's been from episode one to. Now it's gonna be the 10th episode that we did in a year and a half. Um, you'll see not only the production get better, but then everybody's uh, character storyline blossom. So thank you, that's a really good comment. Uh, the Scooby-Doo episode, you'll even flash back to the ghost episode from Halloween or the season one. Yes, Duncan. 
ghosts are real. <laughs> <laughs> um, speaking of ghosts and whatnot, uh, we're going to have you perform in a moment. Okay. Um, but I wanted to know before we uh, close the show with your music, um, what's Sky Daddy up to in the, in the spring? Like, what, what do you got going on besides the Soggy Bottom Band? The spring, I, I don't, I need to look at my calendar, but I'm really excited about this. The gig that's coming up on February the 19th. Okay. Uh, it's, uh, it's at the uh, Lake Havasu Rockabilly Reunion Festival. It's a three day event, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. We play on the 19th, which is the Saturday, and we play between 3.30 and 5 with my Johnny Cash tribute band. Yes. And I'm going to have a steel guitar player. Ooh, even yeah. better. It's going, to be, it's going to be a really good show if you can make it to the Rockabilly reunion. Okay. And you are the hardest working musician in town, so like, uh, what's your normal gigs that anybody that's watching is going to go see Sky Daddy? I appreciate that. I might not be. I, I know some that work just as hard or harder than me. But um, the question was... What? Where can we find Sky Daddy on a random oh. week or like what's your weekly schedule? Oh, every Tuesday I'm at Jersey Lilies. Uh, looks like every Wednesday now I'll be at the 50s Diner in Cordes Junction. Nice. Um, some, and, and other than that, you just kind of look at my schedule, skydaddy.net. Not .com, .net. Skydaddy.net well, has a calendar. I keep it updated so you can find out where I'm playing. Right. Now if I go to skydaddy.net, will Skynet take over my computer? No. No, they won't. I promise. It's completely separate. All right, cool. Well, we got that on camera, so when the robots come and take over, uh, we can blame Sky Daddy for that. What song are you going to perform for us? I'm going to perform a song from the Soggy Bottom Band from the show on, on June 11th over at the uh, Yavapai Performance Hall. I'm going to do the uh, the song that made them famous. Um, Excellent. Um, Man of Constant Sire. <laughs> Excellent. Well, I'm excited uh, to see that. Thanks. Me too. In constant sorrow for all my days I am a man of constant sorrow I've seen troubles all my days I bid farewell to old Kentucky Place where I was born and raised Place where he was born and raised Oh, six long years I've been in trouble, no pleasant year on earth I found. Oh, in this world, I'm bound to travel. Had no friends to help me now. He has no friends to help me now. It's very well, my old true lover. See you again Oh, run down To ride this railroad Perhaps I'll die Upon this train Perhaps you'll die Upon this train You can bury me In some deep valley For many years Where I may stay and you may learn to love another while I'm sleeping in the grave. While he's sleeping in his grave. Maybe your friends think I'm a stranger. Be no more. But there's one promise that is given. I'll meet you on God's golden shore. He'll meet you on God's golden shore. He'll meet you on God's golden shore. That's right, everybody. Let's give it up for Sky Daddy performing a song from the Soggy Bottom Band that you can see June 11th. Sky, you sound awesome. It was a pleasure having you on the as a guest. Thank you, Zinni. Pleasure to be here. Sweet. And everybody check this out and see Sky Daddy in his various uh, forms throughout town. And don't forget that for the Elvis uh, Valentine Graham, whatever you call it, you can call him and we'll put the information on our website. With that said, I'm Robert Zinni signing off of Five Senses Webcast. You can like us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. And don't forget to visit us at fivesensesmag.com.